Good evening. It is 7:27, and I now call the East Lime Zoning Commission meeting of July 7th, 2002, to order. Let's rise for pledge of allegiance, please. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Application. Excuse me. Attendance. Myself, I am here. Mr. Peck. Mr. Granitek is here. Ms. Thurlow is here. Mr. Dwyer is here. Ms. Jet Harris is here. Mr. Schmidt is here. Ms. Markovitz is here. Mr. Mulholland. Mrs. Hardy. Sue. The only one we are missing tonight is Mr. Ginsburg. Moving on from there, public delegations. Is the time set aside for the public to address the commission on subject matters that are not on the agenda? Do we have any said items? No. Moving on to public hearing number one, I believe we have to excuse Mr. Peck. Yep. Correct. And I would like to seat Ms. Markovitz for that, for the application of Nicole Nadu for a special permit for a dance studio indoor recreation at 11 Freedom Way, Unit D2, Niantic, Connecticut. At this time, you may, Mr. Mulholland. This is a special permit application under section 11.2.4, special permit for indoor recreation in a light industrial zone. The business is existing in the industrial zone and is relocating to the light industrial zone for business reasons. Um, the, site, the site is existing. We did, the building is relatively new, maybe 15 years old, so it's still compliant with our site plan requirements. Um, it is a, a multi-use building. There are several businesses in, in it, which will be uh, happy and will probably address in her presentation. Um, there are 50, there are required 78 parking spaces when it was built under those regulations. There are 78 now. However, uh, many of these uses are parking in front of garage doors that are on the building in some instances. So when we start counting up the miscellaneous parking spaces, we get around 107. Uh, her prime time is going to be, I think it's 3, 3.30 to 8 o'clock. And so there's going to be some overlap with very, very minor. So her prime time for the dance studio will be at that time. Um, peak hours, so I think I'm going to get 3.30 to 8 o'clock, and I think the applicant can sort of comment on that. I believe there's adequate parking, the site is only compliant. Um, however, my lady will uh, finish the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mahalan. All right. Like Good evening. Introduce your name, state your name, please. Sure, Nicole Nato. I currently own 5678 Dance, and I plan to continue owning it I just need to relocate uh, so the location in question will be used as a dance studio the hours of operation will be approximately 3 30 to 8 Monday through Friday the average class size is 10 students out of the 25 classes a week that I teach only seven have parents that even stay most classes are drop and go due to COVID and things um, I've been in business for 13 years 11 of those have been here in Niantic due to an severe rent increase i am looking for a more affordable option any larger gatherings that we have rehearsals parties etc will be on weekends when the other businesses are closed so in building a there's an office and a wheelchair manufacturer b has a computer company storage screen printer and a warehouse um, and then d the one that i am looking at has a machine shop Numbers three and four are a contractor who is only there part-time, and five and six is a manufacturer also only there part-time. So. thousand square feet as a unit? Yes. Yes. Which is the size of most of the units there. in this development. <clears throat> so it's more of a startup type of a property mm -hmm. where most units are a thousand square feet. Um, as uh, she pointed out, some of the other uses are daytime uses mostly, and some are storage, which you know, don't have you know, the occasional use. Um, so 
So it appears that it should be not problematic for the interaction of our students, the business, and traffic should not be a problem in Marshall Park community. In my opinion. Ms. Nadu, what is your downtime in terms of like swapping locations? I know you guys. So I am in my current location until the end of August, um, but I plan to start, I'm hoping to start in this location in September. Anybody Downtime. have any questions? I do. Um, sure. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, indoor recreation, what does it include? Is it tap, jazz, ballet? Or it is all of the above. Contemporary. Yes. Hip hop. And hip hop. Yay. Okay. Yes. With only appropriate music. Okay. <laughs> Your parking is like wave parking. Come in, float the cars, and out. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Any... Uh, potential uh, issues with noise in the, within your space adjacent I, to others? I don't think so. In my all of my years, I've never had a music complaint. So I don't feel, because I keep it low. It's a lot of children. Mm -hmm. So. And no, I mean, I don't know what the flooring type is that may cause potential issues with, with dancing and, you know, not, not I'm not yep. saying just music, but also, you know, noise generated from Absolutely. the activities within the building. Shh. I know that you said most of these are off our businesses mm -hmm. you said there was one office yep there's an office and a machine shop it's like a contractor and, and, and a machine what shop proximity is the office to the, the office is at the other end okay yes and i have a floating floor so it's padded so it does not make as much okay. noise all right mm -hmm. that's all i have I will not do that. We haven't heard from anybody within any of the developments. And I'm going to assume um, acoustically you're going to keep that all the way you can instruct. Absolutely. You don't have to shout over the music. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mall, you don't think the parking will impede parking for the tenants that are already there? Uh, I don't. It impedes on the surface, and I ask your layout. I have a plan here if anybody wants to look at it. Okay. I previously at previous applications. Uh, circulation is very good. Um, and again, 10, 12 students is not a lot of okay. action. And there's 107 spaces. Approximately, yeah. Mis yeah. including the miscellaneous, there's some of them unofficial, but the capacity is there. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No, I'm quite satisfied. Good. With that being said, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So move. Do I have a second? Mr. Granitech? Second. 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 Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Motion carried. Public hearing is closed. Moving on to regular meeting. Please note that Ms. Denise is remained seating for Mr. Peck. Hey, no kissing here. For the application of Nicole Nadeau for a special permit for a dance studio slash indoor recreation at 11 Freedom Way, Unit D2, Niantic, Connecticut. Mr. Mulholland, do you want to add anything to uh, this or? I don't think I did. I don't think you need any conditions in my view. Um, I think we've covered everything in the acoustic questions were very good, um, even though a little bit out of our jurisdiction, but then again, if you've got a user that may be adversely affected, we should know that in the decision making the question was asked. Um, and I think it was a very good point. Um, you know, we have more traffic from the condos than we do the industrial uses in the affordable housing on top of the hill. It's actually easier to get in and out of here than it is at Midway Mall as well. Absolutely. Nothing against Midway Mall whatsoever, but yeah. just saying. Anybody got any questions? Mm -hmm. No, there's a church up there that has a whole lot more parking than she'll have to worry about, so I see no problem with it whatsoever. You good, Terry? I'm good. Myself, I'm fine. I'm good. good. With that being said, I would take a motion to approve or deny. I move to approve the application of Nicole Nadow for a special permit for a dance studio, indoor recreation at 11 Freedom Way, Unit D2, Niantic, Connecticut. Do I have a second? I second it. Thank you, Ms. Jed Harris. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very 
That being said, Mr. Peck, would you like to join us again, please? Thank you, Denise. Everybody's got to get into the act. Absolutely. <laughs> we all need to take classes, Bill. Let's go take dancing classes. Yes, I offer adult jazz attack. You don't do the salsa, do you? Like the fiery salsa? I'm well, I'm just <laughs> actually took being, it for being years. a little humor there. You'll actually, figure it out in a minute. I yeah. actually took tap jazz and ballet for 15 years when I was a kid, so I think it's great. I think it's a wonderful idea and great for the community and for the kids. Thank you. Yeah, I've been here quite a while. Yeah, good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. Okay, moving on to take the approval of the minutes of June 16th, 2022. Anyone? You want to see you want me to read it? Just make a motion to approve or deny. Motion to approve. I make a motion oh. to. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. No, I didn't know if you. Were, he was still reading though. Oh, I thought I did. Sorry. Well, there you go. So I don't know if I'm supposed to do something. Okay. I do have a motion from Mr. Peck to approve the minutes. So. I second it. Like it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Old business, there is none. New business. Application of Theodore A. Harris, Esquire, for a special permit for a landscape service company per section 8.2.1 and section 25.5 at 23 Black Point Road, East Lyme Assessor's Map, 11.4, lots 172-1, 173 partial. Mr. Mulholland, you'll schedule that, please. Any business on the floor if the majority of the voted commission? Anyone? Moving on. Zoning official. Well, I really don't have anything. We're just very steady. There's some work in the wings. The new building downtown is going quickly. Um, I've got a I've got a new business going in on Boston Post Shore. There's a new building on the first floor. That's looking good. Yeah. Is that the one next to Eastside Pizza? That one you yeah, mean? Yeah, it's starting to come together. Um, the back specialist sort of being office medical kind of use. State continues to be difficult. With, uh, we've been asking them to mow and clean up, and they just kind of don't want to hear it. It's part of their widening, they want to take the trees in front of stop and shop. I've been arguing with them, and I'm not getting anywhere. And they're going to feather the road down to almost zero just at the uh, intersection of Industrial Park and Glenridge Road. He said, Well, they want to smoke shop. I said, Look, the trees are 25 to 20 years old. You're going to take them out. Why don't you be more cooperative with the community? Our engineering book number 99.68 <laughs> in section 10 says no. So I've gotten nowhere with them, and I've tried four or five times. Um, and I think the road's going to look pretty bad with uh, the idea was to swap on the road, get some key and key up. Um, I'm going to plan B where the owner of the property may. Uh, allow me to take a few parking um, spaces up along the road and put trees there. I'm going to get them in out of our road because they will be a little on the thin side, but we'll be able to get them in and at least get some here. Otherwise, that's sort of a negotiation and some discussion, but I think I can pull that out how will it look. I'm not sure yet. Um, if the state doesn't act there, so I don't think they will. And then, uh, you know, there's rumors all over about all kinds of development, but then when I came to the rumors because when I walked through my door, that's all I got. Um, so we sold John, that's pretty much what I had. Can I ask you, would that approve for the uh, extra uh, parking? You said one owner was going to give somebody else the rights to, to parking. What did you just say? At, um, for trees. The existing stop and shop and the trees. And yeah. We have some excess parking spaces that I could use along the sidewalk just, just beyond it. Is that going to be in writing? Oh, all of that will be. Oh, okay. That's what I was concerned about. Discuss. I'm talking to the, their attorney. Right. Um, and of course, the same developer owns it that developed it years ago, so I've interacted with them right. over the years. Um, but this is something we'd like to have for the streetscape. Otherwise, it's going to look pretty, um, you know, pretty raw out there. Um, yeah. And you need vegetation and you need landscaping to soften, you know, those broad roads that are just miracle miles. Trees do a lot. Landscaping does a lot. So that's kind of what's going on. Um, the car wash has closed and a new owner has bought it. He's going to demo the building. I think I shared that with you. And they're going to put up a new one. We're starting to get to the point where I'm waiting.
site plan, I did get them to mow the property because it hadn't been mowed for a while, so we just got them to clean up. Um, I had a meeting with them. Do you notice that Leo's and Leo's, or is it just Leo's, have been having car washes at Liberty and Bank every washed. weekend? Well, <laughs> yeah. And um, the uh, eyeglass place across from Stop and Shop, they're almost ready to open. That's the old Mr. P's? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. haven't already. They've been working pretty hard in there, and uh, they were in there over the weekend. Um, so that's coming along. We've had some new businesses coming into the community. Do we have an update on the old Diana Motel up um, in the hill? There. The tear down or the across the street? Across the street up in the hill. Oh, they're, they're crawling. Yeah, they're crawling up for a variety of reasons. Uh, um, how shall I say? Apparently, there were some issues with our previous building official that were uh, problematic. And um, there was a apparently lengthy discussion about going. I think that may be past us. And we are now understanding it's going to be getting and get to get work. Um, that area is looking a little downtrodden lately. Uh, but yeah, I think the whole. state gets going. Um, and then we're supposed to start around July 1, so for the state, you know, for the state, that could be August 1st. Um, but they're poised to get moving. Has, sorry, you done? I'm, I'm, I'm just frustrated with that. Whole, whole intersection. Welcome to Zona. Well, yeah, that's 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 the postcard for East Lime now. When you well, that for summer traffic. Yeah. That's where you go yeah. to start. Come yeah. off the highway. Yeah. 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 Speaking yeah. of that general area, there is Starbucks um, going to get rid of that entrance there, or are they waiting for the the construction of the road there? Well, I mean, I'm per se. She wants to change the sign because it's ugly, et cetera, et cetera. I said, well, we're all here to make a proposal. So that ideally, we should just continue the landscaping and the fence and close it off permanently. Well, there will be C. They don't own it. Uh. The owner doesn't want to do that. And then Starbucks doesn't want to pay for it. Any particular reason the owner doesn't want to do that? Um, I think he's anticipating another user at some point with a drive through okay. entrance. And then the question is, who pays for the improvement? That's always the issue when they're not a lease. Because that originally was denied from the Zoning Commission the zoning at the time, and they denied. won the appeal. Yes. Well, actually, what happened is it was denied by the Zoning Commission. They only approved it as a you know, park and drive and walk in. They went to the Zoning Board of Appeals, who gave them a variance for the drive through and we were shocked because there's no legal hardship, but nobody challenged it. And so, therefore, it was installed, and now the fears of the Zoning Commission have come true in terms of it's not an appropriate spot for a drive through and it wasn't designed for it, so that's why you see you know, all, all the commotion all the time. It's just not adequate, in my opinion, for that. Yeah, no, so, so in reference to what you were asking, asking to not that it makes any difference, okay. but you turned it down. They appealed it three times. Third time, they won the appeal. Came to the zoning board, and the zoning board did approve it. Yes, but GBA approved the drive-through, <coughs> not a variance. Right. Yeah. So there's a long history. This board's <coughs> paying attention to all those kind of things over the years. Because some of you obviously weren't here, so you don't know the history. But when you hear it, you're like, oh, okay, fine. So that's how we got to this point. Practically speaking, the state's going to do a taking in front of the good stock of the. Uh, I don't know how much. I think it's only three or four feet. So we're going to have a little adjustment there. And that might be an opportunity to say, hey, we've got to close it up. I'm going to contact the owner just to have a discussion. Three or four feet might have a significant impact. That's right. It okay. does. And, and that might be the catalyst. <laughs> that it does, for those of you who yeah. drive all. It's already <laughs> in life. I can yeah. hear yeah. When, yeah. when the opportunity does come up. Mm. Um, so the state's been going on, and uh, you know, it's going to be a long haul. They're coming in three years. You know, maybe it'll be two, but they always, those, those contractors seem to say, you know, they got three day take care. Three and a half. See. And, uh, yep. you know, so we, we move along. I have a question. Um, is there, am I allowed to ask for an update for the, for those, 
I, I refer to it as a SIFT building, but that's not what it is. But the old, is there is there an update that we can? Well, yeah, I mean, practically speaking, most of what they're doing is building code right now. They're building around, they've had as many as 50 people on the job. They're moving very quickly. Uh, the upper floors, of the top floor, I guess, is, is, I think they're getting ready to sheetrock up there. Um, on the commercial side, it's just it's the one go. I've got someone else that I'm dealing with. We're trying to figure out, if, and they're trying to figure out if they're a restaurant or they're a retail, prepackaged, retail distributor of prepackaged foods, which would be more in line with the grocery operation. They could do that, so I'm waiting on them. Like a gallop in gourmet or something? Yeah, or? And yes, and then, so we're kind of going back and forth because it might have to affect the parking, so I've got to look at that as we look at these uses. Um, that comes <coughs> two store comes to the other two, I think, are unknown at this time. Um, and then I do have a new fish market coming in that's going to go, and I think he closed the deal. I've approved him because it's a, it's a new shape approval. It's going to go in um, the yellow building on Methodist and Oak Street on the corner. We're going to take the first floor. Methodist and Oak. Someone said Azalea was moving down to the new building where SIF did. They may be known as Chad. Who is, I'm sorry? But I mean, it's really Azalea might be. Who's that? It's next to the Fish Market. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any updates? Oh, yeah. Any updates on the fence? Yeah, they're going to put in a fence next to the Fish Market. Yeah. Any update on the fence with Amtrak? My understanding is that they're going to be putting in black chain link. From what I read, is that they're going to hold off on a decision for now and they're going to going to try to come up with some other design for the village aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So right now they put it off. Is that Amtrak? Is that, that is Amtrak, yeah. Interesting. Yep. Um, I read that. And wow. just for the record, Ms. Jet Harris, it is the Norton is the SIFT building. Thank you. Yeah, it doesn't leave it. It's on 185 Main Street, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the, if anybody's interested, I may have already told you to architecturally approved fence that Amtrak is putting up in most places is up in no one. It's found in, uh, in the shipyard. Well, I shouldn't say the shipyard. It's in Spices Marina right across the way the Amtrak rail line runs right in. So it's been up at the end of the I have checked. I mean, I... Everybody has a different... Yeah. Nice I like it. It's, but everybody is what it is. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mulholland. Mrs. Hardy? That's okay. It's because I have discovered when I, after I got dressed this morning, that I had two different shoes on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been home That's since. They look close. <laughs> we wouldn't notice if you didn't say anything. <laughs> These things happen, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> as a follow up to the previous discussion about the car wash, uh, the uh, town's also received numerous complaints about the buildup of trash out in the back. And, and there, there's an agreement that's supposed to be taken care of and hauled off. Uh, last night, the board heard uh, from about, I would say, 30, 25 to 30 local residents about the coyote situation in town, uh, along with um, an increased uh, presence of bobcats and uh, bears. Right bear but next door to I us. think. Uh, we uh, several people had called to say in advance to say that they were coming to speak uh, at the uh, beginning of the meeting, and uh, so we had advance notice that we had the local animal control officers there, and uh, it was very interesting because they cannot deal with wildlife; they can only deal with domestic animals. Oh yeah. So team. the state yeah. must come in and deal with that, and this is a statewide problem, but. They don't have a statewide solution yet as to what to do. Uh, so there were some suggestions given as to things that residents could do in the meantime uh, to try to protect themselves and their pets. 
and I noticed that uh, several people uh, last night were wearing uh, waist belts that had little pockets in them to show how they go out walking uh, with air horns to warn that they, if they see something approaching to try to scare them away. But it really has become a major problem. And I think um, particularly for zoning uh, and applications that come before you, this is going to continue to be a problem as we have more and more development and there's fewer and fewer places for the animals to go. You can't trap them because there's no place to put them. You can't put them on state property. You can't take them to the state forest and release them. So the question is what to do. And there's barely a person that you can talk to that hasn't seen them. So after hearing this from 30, about 30 people last night, I leave, and uh, now I'm really cautious. I make sure that I click my button, make my car lights, headlights go on before I go out to get in the car. I'm driving up Main Street and nearly run over a coyote that's at the top of the hill crossing the street, and there are people out on the sidewalk still. They're local tourists. They're out at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. They're walking. And here they are up at the ice cream place, and the coyote runs right behind it. There's people there. They've still got little kids with them, and they're totally unaware. So I think one of the things that uh, the Board of Selectmen can do, uh, but I don't know if we actually need zoning approval to post signs around town so that people who are just in town for the day, coming to the beaches, to the parks, you know, stay a couple nights, can we put up signs that warn them that there are coyotes in the area and Wildlife. to be aware and to watch their pets? All right. We'll figure out how I'll need to see the size and shape of the thing that but that's something I can improve. And um, there's a there's a section of the code that allows it for those kind of purposes. Mm -hmm. And so we need to do Okay. Do that. And just to add, I did see that coyote this morning at 10 o'clock walking down the center line of Oak Street, right in front of the condos, with something hanging and dangling out of its mouth. And, uh, was an ant dog. Several people watching it, stopping. <laughs> it was an animal of some kind. And then he darted in behind the Methley Street condos. But he's right downtown, the size of a small German shepherd. Oh, I, they're up at CVS like at 3.30 yeah. in the afternoon. Their den is over there by the railroad tracks. Uh, one of my neighbors followed it, and its den is over in that direction. Okay. So pretty soon it's going to have babies. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, There's, so babies there's are a den born. by my house, and they had six... Pups. Yep. Mm -hmm. I guess there's something cooking across from um, Black Point Pizza. Mm -hmm. and, that, that and what's good? There. So you go down and it's become overgrown, but the owner doesn't know it. What's good to know is is that they, they don't mate in the same place every year. They So hopefully next year they won't be as much of a problem. They are a problem right now. Well, I would doubt it because Niantic's a pretty nice place. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they're enjoying living in town. Mrs. Hardy, and, living can, in town and can not I ask you taxes. this? Is it something to where the town could put information on our website to basically state that, you know, like these animals most likely will not hurt you unless they're provoked, you know, because this is actually one of these touchy subjects to mm -hmm. where, you know, you're going to have both sides say, well, you know, I want to destroy them or, you know, I want to protect them. So, if we can get information out there to say, look, basically they will not bother you unless they're provoked, right? That like most they're saying, of the time, but they do. We have incidences saying, where they have, so you never know. Well, that's what I'm saying. If we get yeah. the information out there, correct. At least from people particularly who are in town temporarily and unfamiliar yes. with the circumstances, but I don't know that they would necessarily go to the website. There was a but Facebook post knows? a couple weeks back that was put out by the town, mm -hmm. an informational bulletin. Because yeah. if we put signs up, the business owners might feel like, you know, they, they, it'll drive, you know, tourists out. They'll be like... Well, we were a, thinking yeah. about perhaps along the boardwalk where people would be walking and likely uh, walking pets and things. Uh, but unfortunately, it's now not just at nighttime and it's not just oh, at yeah, dusk. Oh, no, uh, example, not to go on about it, but when I did observe today, um, about 15 yards was a man... Motorized wheelchair, handicapped, defenseless. 
couldn't get out of the chair. The coyote was literally 20, 30 feet away. So, you know, well, uh, so uh, I'm not sure whether it would be the next meeting of the Board of Selectmen or the following meeting, but we will be having state DEP uh, uh, enforcers coming down to talk with the town about some measures and suggestions that we might take. But it, the, the real quandary is if you set traps, you're likely to get some other animal that you don't want to be trapped. and. Um, well, if you trap the animal, what are you going to do with it? It's illegal to take it and, and, and dump it any place. There's a natural deterrent, like, you know, like with some birds, you could put like a, a fake owl there. Is there something that they're afraid of that they would, you know? We it could... doesn't appear to me that they don't, that we're, that we're afraid of them. They could care yeah, less about the, us. We're <laughs> the apex predator for them, and then there's them, and that's about it. I think they're coming on the 28th, July 28th. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. They are <laughs> July 28th is when we're having them. So that should be informative. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, requests to develop uh, pickleball courts, mm -hmm. uh, particularly from many of the senior residents in town, because this is an activity that uh, is something that they are able to um, participate in very comfortably. Uh, again, there's no instant solution to this. We do have um, the tennis courts at the high school that can be used off season or off practice time. And we have a, uh, the senior center, but that's indoor. There's no space outdoors. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of interest in this. Uh, they are, uh, this group is going before several boards and commissions uh, to say that this is really something that senior residents in particular would like to see developed. So we do have some pieces of town property that are not developed at this time. Uh, but again, to develop a field, it's not just a matter of going out and drawing some lines. Uh, there's significant cost for that. So uh, that's something that's on the horizon. And um, we approved several capital improvement items last night. Uh, I think of interest to this board in a previous discussion about traffic and uh, traffic solutions. Uh, we received a $25,000 grant to study Route 161 and what to do about uh, the so-called the corridor to and from town. Uh, it's not to do anything, it's just to study it, $25,000, but it was a grant. So hopefully there will be some ideas, and I'm sure that they will be wanting some input from Mr. Mulholland, hopefully, mm -hmm. and then for Ed to the board as well. And um, other than that, most of the items were uh, final approval of things that had already been approved previously, and this was the last round to go before a town meeting and then come back to the selectmen. So I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. Oh, one other thing, uh, there's been a lot of interest in the Hathaway property and the possibility of the town purchasing that. And we are still gathering information on this from um, various sources. Uh, we're getting, the, we're not getting all of the information that we need in order to make a good decision as to whether this would be a good investment for the town. It does uh, involve, it does include some wetlands, uh, some other positive features, but unfortunately there's no roadway into the area, into that area. So it's not just a matter of purchasing the property. If you want to be able to utilize the property, then you know there's no parking, there's no roadway into it. So there Make are it a coyote farm. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the neighbors wouldn't appreciate that either. <laughs> So, anything else? Congratulations on Elvis Night. I was to ask yeah. you, did you organize that, Roseanne? Because I heard that you did it, and it was fabulous. It was. Thank you. Did you organize it? I gave some suggestions. Well, I, I it was really wonderful. Like, a lot of my neighbors, they absolutely yeah, loved, really it, loved and it. And they just, that was just a really great thing. So, I was all shook up. <laughs> um, I, I know to, the feeling. I have a comment about the pickleball. Just something to consider just kind of off the cuff but in um, Pine Grove we have a basketball court and the pickleball net 
we use it um, for in the summertime. This is the second year. It's very big in my neighborhood. So you can buy a portable one, and they, they work very well. They're $115, and ours has made it two years with tons of kids, adults, and we have pickleball hour for adults and pickleball time for the kids and stuff. And we have a bin, and they keep the things there. So if you have a court, the pickleball net is $115 from mm -hmm. Amazon. So... And it, it's, it's held up very nicely. All right. Thank you. You're so uh, I will say that, um, you know, once in a while an idea just pops into your head, and I happen to be an Elvis fan, so I said, let's go for it and get some it excitement great. in downtown. It was great. But Did Elvis make it home? I was just curious. <laughs> I can't say enough about Elvis. For those of you who you don't understand what I mean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Um, <clears throat> I think the positive thing was that it was so upbeat and there was so much enthusiasm downtown, a lot of people downtown, stacking around. Um, I didn't win the costume contest, but that's okay. But you looked great. <laughs> so, uh, but I hope that uh, we can do some additional things like this from town, time to time. Uh, Elvis informed us that Miss Priscilla, otherwise known as Miss P, uh, does, um, oh my gosh, now her name went out of my mind. One of the, yes, thank you, that she does Patsy Klein. So they really like Niantic, in spite of the fact that the Cadillac convertible that was supposed to pick them up broke down. Uh, thank goodness for <laughs> Mr. Pete Powers, right? Yes. Yep. And uh, so they would like to come, they would like to be invited back to do a country western night. So get your boots ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Mr. Hardy. Uh, carrying on Co comments from the zoning board liaison to planning we had it last time next up is mr. Peck on the 12th comments from the chairman myself um, hope everyone have a good summer fireworks coming up this weekend we got the sail fest followed by next weekend is celebrate East Lime st. John's Fair fireworks are rotten. New London sail fest uh, sponsored from the casinos Saturday night. Yeah, rumor has it there's some really good French fries there too. So that. Yes, I was gonna say celebrate East Lime on the 16th. I think there's fries there too. I'm not sure, but yeah. Other than that, other than myself, everyone have a good summer. Enjoy. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Aye.